All right, verse 3. He is talking about the Son, the one through whom God made the ages, the heir. He exists as the brightness of God's glory and an imprint, character, of God's spirit being, like an imprint from a signet ring into wax or a burn mark into skin from an iron. An imprint. You couldn't get more temporal or time-based than this. And people who want to argue that God exists outside of time not only show they don't understand time, it's not a real thing that you can exist outside of. It's a measurement that shows us the relationship between things as they exist or occur relative to each other. But God does time is God is in time or not in time. That's that's their incorrect view, but I'm using their words. I'm talking about how time relates to Jah or he relates to it because it even says, uh, according to Peter, a day with God is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Well, that's time, okay? That's just showing you that he operates using a scale of time different from ours. So whereas we use the earth, the moon, the sun, and some of the stars in terms of their positioning, you know, there could be much different types of time measurement systems involving solar systems, galaxies, all kinds of cosmological things that we don't even observe, but that they see or that are in other dimensions that they use to help, that, that they use to associate events uh, relative to each other. So if Jesus was given life, as he says in John 5 and in John 6, John 5, 26, John 6, 57, he lives because of the Father. <laughs> Whether he was begotten or created makes no difference. It's the same thing. Do we say that a child wasn't created by his mother or father, even because they're begotten out of the mother? It's absurd. It makes no sense. And even if you said begotten in some differential way from creation, ex nihilo type thing, that's not what we're talking about when we're created. And we're talking about a start of life. So every begotten being has a start of life. And Jesus says this himself. I live because of the Father. The Father gave life to the Son to be in himself. John 5, 26. John 6, 57. And of course, we have John 1, 18, the only begotten God. We have Hebrews 1, 3, the imprint of God's being. The firstborn, as we're going to see in a minute. There's there We're going to run out of ways to describe a temporal relationship between John and his son here if we don't accept what we already have told to us. But when you reject who Jesus really is, you're not going to accept the things that tell you about him. So that's why Trinitarians use the Trinity. It's a doctrine that came about long after. And even though it relates to some of the things in the Bible and they try to use it to resolve their problem with monotheism that really isn't a problem in the Bible, the fact is, if we just use the Bible, you don't get involved into all these non-biblical ideas of time and existing outside of time and begotten versus created, wasting all of your time and mental energy over something that the Bible nowhere describes in that way. It's very clear, very plain. It comes right out and says it with no commentary, like it has to explain these terms, firstborn, son, imprint. They know what they mean, and that's why they use them.